Welcome to Anastasia Chorna's show. My name is Anastasia Chorna, and today, since we have been on the topic of acting, I would like to talk to you about five things that I believe a new actor should or should not do. Let's get started. One of the biggest questions that come up when we're talking about acting is whether you have to go to Los Angeles or not. You might be watching this video from anywhere in the world where YouTube is available right now and there might be an acting scene and opportunities for you out there. I mean commercial acting is prosperous right about anywhere you go. Theater scene is always out there and people love theater and you can be an actor in theater. How far do you see yourself going as an actor? What kind of opportunities would you like to actually accept and what kind of opportunities would you like to open yourself to? And that is when no matter how much you're resisting it or have been resisting the idea of moving to Los Angeles, you might might eventually actually want to go to Los Angeles to propel your career to a new level. Los Angeles is called film and TV mecca of the world for a reason. The majority of the production companies, I want to say probably around 90% of the major production companies have their studios, have their headquarters here in Los Angeles, in greater Los Angeles area. Even though they might be filming outside of Los Angeles, they film all around the world or there's a high percentage of productions that film in Arizona or Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia and other states due to financial reasons and uh, also locations might be something that fits much better and you can find cheaper background over there but aside from the fact that the headquarters are all based here in Los Angeles a lot of producers a lot of directors a lot of production people are actually based here the lead characters a lot of supporting roles will be cast from Los Angeles because of the high concentration of the production people it's all interconnected but high percentage of production companies here in Los Angeles brings the need for actors coming here and the training that actors do receive here in Los Angeles which means that LA and Hollywood there is a higher percentage and concentration of professional coaches and trainers here in Los Angeles as well as there are quite a few amazing film and TV schools that are based over here. For instance, New York Film Academy, AFI, American Film Academy, Chapman has an amazing film program, also USC and others. With those programs, students have to film a lot of projects. That comes with a lot of work. Sooner or later, no matter how much you're resisting it, no matter how much people might be telling you that there's no need to go to Los Angeles, there might be a time where you will find your yourself coming here as the next step of your actor evolution. With all of that being said, I would like to talk to you specifically about five things that you should not or should do as a new actor in town here in Los Angeles. And it's based on my own experience, it's based on my own trial and error and the things that worked for me or didn't work for me. So let's just dive into it. Thing number one, our little point number one. Talent is awesome. Talent is great and all, however, you cannot sustain your living just purely on talent. Let's just uh, face the reality that no matter how talented you might have been and you might have been told that you were, you need to work. You need to study and learning never ever stops. Number one is training. That is what I would like to talk to you. Even though you might have a bachelor's degree in performing arts, you've gone through some training courses at some Page Park studio in Houston like I did, or no matter what kind of training or education you might have gotten in a different town or a different state, when you come here to Los Angeles, I highly recommend getting into some 
classes, some acting classes, some training. There's different schools, there's different preferences, different things that people tell you and what I want to tell you is that find what works for you. And I'm not talking about finding a teacher or a trainer here in Los Angeles that will just constantly tell you how amazing you are, how talented you are, and that you are doing a great job, but doesn't necessarily twick you or allow your growth, allow you to learn something new, something different, and step outside of your comfort zone. I'm talking about a trainer who will help you grow and not feed your ego, but the one that will help you deal with your ego, get rid of it, and also will praise you when you deserve the praise because we do all deserve that. You do not have to settle on a class. You do not have to settle on a coach. If certain techniques, certain uh, people might work for you in a certain period of your time, in a certain period of your life. And it is okay to go from one to another and find what actually works for you. The great thing about that is a lot of acting communities, they offer free class where you just come and you see if it might be something that interests you before you buy courses. It is expensive, it might get pretty pricey, so do definitely find something that actually works for you. But my point is just continue searching until you find the person who is able to teach you what you don't know and allow the growth and at the same time not feed your ego saying that you're amazing just give me your money you have to make sure it is a person who is genuinely interested in um, seeing you succeed the way we work with my coach is we basically somewhat study under Jack Plotnick who wrote this amazing book New Thoughts for Actors. It is available for free online. I will give the link to you guys over here. It is in PDF format. Anybody can download it and read it and see if it's something that speaks to you. Jack Plotnick actually holds workshops even right now during the pandemic. He never really stopped. He's a working actor and he's amazing and um, to learn more about Jack Plotnick if that something it's not sponsored it's not an ad this is just something that truly speaks to me and what works for me and that is why I'm talking about this uh, you might check out his website which I'll also link here that's where you get his book new thoughts for actors which is free again it's not sponsored it's not an ad they don't know I'm talking about them right now but if you are a new actor coming to Los Angeles and you don't really know where to start or if you're outside of Los Angeles and you haven't really decided to move just yet you might just want to check out Jack Plotnick website and download the book and read that to see if it's something that speaks to your heart that can help your personal growth in the acting field. All right, the second thing that I believe you should do when you are here in Los Angeles when you are fresh off the boat is make sure that you submit, submit, submit. Submit yourself everywhere you can. Try to get as many auditions as possible simply because auditioning allows you to get comfortable in the room so to speak. I know it's different right now in the pandemic and everything is pretty much self-taped. I even had the callback. It was via Zoom. There's some auditions that do happen in the room with actual people but the majority is still done by zoom or self tapes there's a few websites that are the most popular ones here with the breakdowns so to speak the casting calls and I do recommend registering everywhere and yes all of it is money but it is worth it there's three that I use all of the time it is um, backstage which is semi new to Los Angeles and it is one of the most popular ones in New York as far as I know so it just moved here to Los Angeles a few years ago and um, it's gaining speed and I want to say personally the most amazing projects that my most favorite projects that I have been a part of came from backstage and a lot of people are still on the fence about backstage because there's still some scam on it so you have to be mindful you have to make sure you're not just jumping into something that you don't know what it is but backstage is a really good platform and I like it a lot then there's actors access which is super easy to work with it is 
probably the least expensive one. And then the third one is LA Casting. LA Casting or Breakdown Services, it is something that I have simply because my representatives, my agent and my manager, they used to submit me on. I did not have greatest luck with it when I was submitting by myself. I never really received any kind of feedback from it myself. Not a single audition, I want to say, that I received personally before I had representatives, before I had a, an agent, actually came from LA Casting, no matter how much I submitted myself. Funny enough, for my own project, I cast my projects from LA Casting, among others. I actually had great turnaround and really amazing actors who came from it. It just never worked out for me as an actor, but I still have it because my agents require that. I still do submit myself even though I have representation. I just want to continue working. I just want to continue practicing and, and, and gaining more experience and working with different people because that's also a way to network over here. Don't go to networking events, guys. You do not want to do that because when you go to networking events and everybody's talking about networking events, especially when you're fresh off the boat and you don't know what's up, let me tell you a secret. When you go to a networking event, all those people that you meet at the networking event are also struggling actors, producers, or somebody who's also looking for work. Mm, barely anybody who can offer you anything really legitimate will be going to those events, wasting their time. Just a little secret. Mm, don't go. Don't go. The best networking that you can do is on set. Point number three. Do not rush into getting into SAG if you're not a SAG member yet, if you're not a SAG actor yet. And also do not rush to get representation in Los Angeles. Here's the thing, let's start with representation, let's start with agents. Do not rush into getting yourself an agent. Yes, if an opportunity presents yourself, then go for it, sign with an agent, see if it works out for you, and uh, see where it takes you. The best way to make sure that you are confident and comfortable and you know your worth and you know how to behave and you learn all of that is by doing the work with student productions, with independent films, with, um, you know, just practicing. Pretty much you've got to intern a little bit in the film industry before you're ready to sign with an agent and then go into quote unquote bigger rooms and get in front of bigger casting directors and uh, producers and stuff like that. When it comes to SAG, the first couple of years I was here, I was so desperate. I was so desperate to get into SAG. And people tell you that once you're in SAG, that's it. This is, this is it. This is it. You are ready to take on the Oscar, but that's not how it works. You still have to go to auditions. You still have to find the project that is meant for you. And you still have to put in the work. You still have to gain the experience. You still have to work, 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 submit, 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 and do all the things. Except when you are a SAG actor, you have to pay to be an actor. And do you see this tendency with the third point already? The money keeps on piling up. Being a SAG actor might present certain difficulties, especially when you don't have representatives. You're not allowed to work on non-union projects. It basically kind of limits the amount of work you're able to get. And if you're not you know, Brad Pitt or Jolie who can, uh, you know, just kind of do one project every five years and, uh, you know, they're set. <laughs> it becomes expensive. So I do not recommend rushing into it. The best place to be is to gain eligibility and become SAG eligible, where you're kind of in between. And when you're SAG eligible, you are basically able to work both non-union and union projects. And it's kind of like a sweet spot. The overnight success that you hear about comes with years and years of work. So you have to make sure you're continuously working. And I know I've said that so many times, but don't rush into anything. Don't rush into all of those things that I've just talked about and just continue working. Because one day, one of the projects, one of the roles will just blow up and, and then you will become the overnight success that everybody's talking about. 
even though they might not be talking about the years of work that you had done previously to this project or the role. Number four, be nice everywhere you go. The code of conduct that I talked about in the previous point, that is what it is. You've got to make sure you're professional. You've got to make sure you're nice. You've got to make sure you're doing the job that you're supposed to be doing. You're coming in on set knowing your lines, having been prepared, and you are kind to everybody. You are not considering yourself to be the center of this universe. You are not thinking that everybody is revolving around you and that this whole world is revolving around you and that everybody's supposed to be tending to your needs. You are being a team player. You're doing exactly the job that you are there to do and then you're helping others if you are able to do so. When you become angry and throw your temper out on somebody else nobody's gonna want to work with you hate to burst your bubble but you are replaceable as talented as amazing as well educated as you are if you are being an asshole on set they're gonna replace you be nice and people are gonna want to continue working with you on their different projects because here's a little secret if you think that people who you're working with on set are working on only one project right now you're wrong a lot of people are working on a lot of projects at the same time. So, if you're nice, chances are they're going to want to invite you to join them in a different project, whether to be an actor or be a supporting or lead actor, it doesn't matter. All right, last but not least, number five, don't be a struggling actor. <laughs> Here's what I mean by that. Make sure that you are not struggling financially. You hear a lot of people who come here to Los Angeles and they talk about how expensive it is to live here. So when you're moving to Los Angeles, be prepared with the fact that the price of living here in Los Angeles will be higher than the Idaho that you're coming from. Be prepared that you will need to find a job as soon as possible to make sure that it is able to cover your needs. An important thing to consider when you're looking for a job here in Los Angeles is the flexibility that you have to achieve. You never know when the next audition will come. You never know when the next callback will come. You never know when the next project will come and it can be any minute. One of the jobs that I actually did was being a brand ambassador. If you don't know what that means, it's basically a person who gets hired by a brand, a company, to represent them at a particular event. It's not the most ideal job when it comes to flexibility here in Los Angeles. However, it does provide a certain level of flexibility because you do not have to book yourself to work a certain event if you don't want to or if you know you're going to be busy that day you have a freedom to pick and choose which events to work but I have been working and I feel like the most ideal when it comes to flexibility and pay job is to work for a based services. I myself have been a delivery driver for almost four years now. You are a private contractor. You do not depend on schedules. You do not depend on bosses or managers or anybody who can prevent you from being the most flexible when it comes to calendar, when it comes to work. You are the master of your schedule. You are the master of your time and it pays well. I have been doing it for four years. I love it. I highly recommend it to everybody. Um, my mom actually does that. My dad is tapping into doing that as well. Another thing that you can do when we are talking about jobs, this job is semi-flexible, is being a background actor. If you are a new actor who is moving to Los Angeles soon, definitely check out Central Casting. Do register with them. Also, Virgo Talent is really great. And then once you register on the websites, on the platforms like Actors Access, Backstage, and, and others like Casting, you are also able able to get background work on that which is paid sometimes it's not paid it again it depends on you whether you want to book yourself for those jobs or not but if you are coming to Los Angeles I would say that is a place to start registering with central casting and Virgo talent and then starting to do some background work so that you can have a flow of money you can start learning what it's like to be on set and gaining experience and also kind of starting to network a little bit here and there all right guys well thank you so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it I hope if you had some questions about 
about acting, I was able to answer them for you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment below, let me know what you think about this. Let me know if you have a dream of becoming an actor or working in the film industry in general. And uh, let me know if there is uh, like a question that you would like me to make a video on to elaborate something on this or any other topic. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.